Continuing with the uh, with the theme of uh, portraiture in the uh, in the Victorian period, uh, we have uh, some more images by uh, by uh, Winterhalter, like uh, uh, another Duchess wearing a very typical style of the 1840s, and another portrait of the lady that you may recall from last time, namely the Duchess of Kent, Queen Victoria's mother. So now she is uh, um, an older woman, not very old, but uh, let's say in her 40s probably, and she definitely looks even more than her age. So uh, you can see her wrapped in a, a big shawl and wearing a very, very typical Victorian bonnet. So um, this, is, uh, this is really something that, uh, that uh, happens in the Victorian period. There are some portraits of Angre. He had a long career. He started, uh, as you remember, in the neoclassical period. He is still alive in the, uh, in the uh, 40s, so here we have a portrait uh, of uh, another French uh, uh, lady with uh, very uh, prettily arranged uh, long ringlets and uh, uh, black dress with a small lace collar, very similar to the one you could see uh, on, uh, on Lola Montes. Uh, and uh, some uh, some more here we have uh, um, another uh, lady from the eight, uh, from the early 50s uh, one of the um, one of the attendants of Empress Eugenie and uh, she's wearing a very uh, very characteristic hairstyle that was later associated with uh, with uh, Empress Eugenie the kind of soft uh, full um, hairstyle and uh, you can see her wearing a very sumptuous blue uh, blue dress. Uh, here we have um, the Empress herself and another very famous, probably one of the most famous uh, portraits by Winterhalter of uh, Eugenie surrounded by her ladies and they like float on the clouds of uh, lightweight uh, fabrics so uh, here we have uh, also Eugenie solo wearing her signature uh, hairstyle. She was she was really one of the uh, the royal women who were truly beautiful. She was the queen consort. She was the empress consort. She was not uh, born to be queen like Victoria. So she was chosen by Napoleon the uh, third, of course, on account of her uh, physical attractiveness. Uh, Victoria at the same time is, uh, I would say, quite, she was pretty but not a beauty queen. She was short, um, she had a tendency to put on weight and uh, she had what some uh, some people call the Hanoverian face, which I don't think was much of a compliment, but at least it proved that she was a very legitimate daughter of her dynasty. So uh, Winterhalter was the portraitist whom she loved because he could capture her beauty which apparently was quite a difficult thing to do you'll see it in a moment when we uh, when we uh, look at some uh, photographic images of uh, Queen Victoria another very interesting source of knowledge uh, about um, uh, Queen Victoria is uh, not Queen Victoria the Victorian fashion is um, the contemporary paintings. One of the very popular genres in painting in the uh, in the middle of the 19th century is uh, the so-called narrative painting, so realistic paintings showing scenes from contemporary daily life. And uh, you can, of course, see a lot of uh, people uh, wearing clothes, sometimes uh, fashionable young women wearing clothes. So here we have some examples. Uh, so rather than try to guess uh, what's going on in the painting, like this one, Palpitation by Charles Westcote, a very popular mid-Victorian uh, artist, uh, you can notice a young woman dressed in a fashionable contemporary dress.
quite modest as you can see. Uh, two more images, uh, one from Walter Deverell, one of the artists um, associated with the pre raphaelite movement. This one is called a pet and again we could discuss the painting itself like who's the pet here, is it a dog, a bird or the woman herself but what we have in the center is a, a rich looking young uh, woman wearing contemporary fashionable dress so uh, you can uh, note the dress the pointed bodice especially and you can note the, the, the hairstyle another one uh, by james collins and another one of the uh, of the pre-raphaelite less known than the main brothers but uh, still uh, we have a, a painting entitled for sale again it could be symbolic so we have a woman uh, here at some sort of what looks like a charity bazaar uh, probably uh, looking through the um, the products that might be bought but maybe she is looking for somebody to marry her so she is like for sale herself uh, whatever look at the clothes look at the bonnet the bonnet itself is quite uh, quite modest, uh, although the uh, the ribbon uh, with which it is fastened below her chin is quite uh, quite decorative. Uh, the dress is quite modest, uh, but you can notice the flounces on the skirt. Very uh, very popular element that made the skirt look optically bigger, and also those pagoda sleeves, so the flaring. Um, flaring uh, long sleeves for day dresses with the white engagants beneath so um, if you look for narrative paintings or genre paintings uh, from the mid-victorian period you have a lot of such commentary also on the uh, on the fashion. If we concentrate on the plates themselves they really show this transition so from uh, from the um, late romantic or kind of transitional period between romanticism and victorianism with still some decoration um, in the form of uh, the fullness of the sleeves and uh, uh, more decorative bonnets increasingly to uh, more and more traditionally feminine but more modest uh, uh, elements. You can see that the Flounces are extremely popular for practical reason. They make the dress look fuller. They make the dress look fuller without having to do those uh, uh, those extra layers of um, uh, of petticoats. So uh, especially day dresses, uh, walking dresses. The shawls are still pop popular. They kind of never went out of fashion. Especially good quality. Indian inspired paisley shawls or cashmere shawls. They never went out of fashion. They were very um, comfortable and useful and now they didn't crash the, uh, the, uh, the skirt rather than earlier. They didn't crash the, uh, the sleeves. So whatever was the fullest uh, element of the fashion, the, uh, the shawl uh, fit quite well. Uh, here we have a, a plate showing just uh, caps and bonnets and hair arrangements from uh, 1843 so you can see it's uh, really getting simplified and modest and uh, small uh, so the fashionable hairstyles uh, go from the ringlets in the early 40s to a small neat head of hair uh, later uh, from the mid 40s uh, onwards so this is what you see in fashion plates this is what you see in portraits of uh, here uh, Mademoiselle Fleury a dancer this is the kind of clothes that she is wearing or Charlotte Bronte this is the kind of uh, clothes and hairstyle that she is wearing and even here we have the first uh, known uh, photograph of Queen Victoria uh, with uh, the Prince of Wales, this, this little child is the future king um, 
uh, King uh, Edward VII and uh, here you have Victoria wearing the same kind of cloth and the same kind of hairstyle as uh, mostly middle class, uh, middle class women so soft neat and uh, and uh, rather small some women like here we have uh, the wife of charles dickens continued wearing the ringlets in the later 40s but unless they were very young this was increasingly um kind of sneered upon because uh, they were like um this um, saying goes uh, lamb uh, no uh, mutton dressed as lamb so an older woman trying to pass for younger um, this might be the case uh, or this might be uh, that some women were actually sticking to the styles they liked when they were younger so um, but uh, um, the, uh, the ringlets uh, were quickly relegated uh, to the repertoire of young unmarried uh, ladies and not matrons the matrons would wear a small uh, small head of uh, of hair. Um, what else? A great variety of day dresses, really different patterns and uh, uh, different arrangements of the skirts. The skirt itself becomes the focus of the fashion, with uh, all kinds of uh, decorations. Usually not surface decorations, but kind of structural decorations. So layering the uh, the flounces you might have all kinds of arrangements of flounces sometimes two or three big flounces that would look like uh let's say uh, an, a short uh, over skirt sometimes in the same color sometimes in a contrasting color uh, or uh, a lot of smaller flounces that would add volume to the uh, to the dress uh, itself um here is an interesting one from the mid 40s and if you look close actually one of these uh, women is smoking she's smoking a pipe which is uh, i would say very daring for a woman at this uh, at this time but yes here we have a uh, a real um image showing that uh, and this continues really in the later 40s in the 50s those uh, are traditional looking conservative looking women with the focus of the fashion moved uh, to the skirt the fullness of the skirt and the decoration of the skirt small bonnets uh, tight bodices uh, rather simple sleeves or at least simple compared with the romantic styles uh, and uh, we have some uh, some um plates from the 50s uh, this is uh, this is again more of the same different patterns different colors uh, wide dresses are not really popular unless you are a young unmarried girl dressed in full uh, clothes for a ball uh, otherwise um, something more practical and modest in darker colors uh, would be preferred uh, Queen Victoria loved um, Scotland and Scottish uh, tartan patterns, so any kinds of checks or, or tartans are very popular in England. Uh, we have um, uh, we have um, this situation continuing until 1856 or 1857 when the uh, when the um, crinoline frame arrives and we continue in a moment.